In this video, I'm going to share with you how to use the MSR XGK Expedition Stove and the pump that you're going to buy with it. I got a question from a viewer and hopefully subscriber, Mike Ghost. By the way, cool handle, Mike. I like this. Very helpful. I'm going to purchase the same stove as you. The only problem is I've never used any other stove other than solid fuel and canister stoves. Sure would be helpful to see a video just about how to use it. Do you have one? Absolutely, because I'm making it just for you, Mike Ghost. So what we've got here, let me flip this around, is the stove. Now, obviously it can be kind of intimidating to use because there's a pump, there's some action here. Let me zoom it out, there we go. So this thing, this stove folds out, kind of does the transformer thing, so it packs down quite small. It's very nice. So you can wrap this hose around. You can jam it into your pot. It works quite well. The stove flips out. It has three legs using the tripod theory of stability. And it's got a couple of parts here. This is the flame diffuser. This is where the flame actually shoots up from a jet, what's called a jet inside. Your stove will come with two jets. One's used for thin fuels like white gas and such. And then the other stove jet is for kerosene heavier fuels. This tube here actually sits inside the flame. The fuel literally goes along this hose around the flame and into the little jet there. And the reason for literally running fuel through the flame is to preheat the fuel so it vaporizes. So what you do is you get your fuel bottle. Make sure absolutely do not fill the fuel bottle up higher than this line. Always go a little bit below depending on how much usage you have. And then if the bottle is pretty full, you simply you make sure the pump's all set up. You screw this bad boy on, as you can see here. You screw this on, just finger tight, nothing crazy. And you begin pumping. Twenty pumps should do it. The bottle is only about one third full. When the bottle is virtually full, if you get 10 to 15, you'll be lucky. Do not overdo it because if you overdo it, you can damage the pump. Learning not what to overdo because you'll feel this force like, ooh, that's much harder all of a sudden. That's when you stop. You make sure this valve is off and then the fuel line here Get a little bit of spit on that bad boy or use some Vaseline or mineral oil, whatever you have. And you flip this armature around because this armature holds onto the fuel can. And all you do is you slide that on here. Let me turn this around so you can see what's going on. I'm gonna move all my stuff here. All right, I'll zoom in just a little bit. And then you simply push this on and then you snap this armature over. I know this is intimidating. It was for me too, believe me, when I first started, I thought, how am I gonna figure this out? But trust me, practice it a bunch at home before you go out into the winter in the mountains and you're hypoxic and can't remember your own name and you know, what, uh, what you do for a living. Of course, this is a little bit unstable, but that's okay. So now that you've got this stove here all set, all you're gonna do is literally turn on the fuel. And what you're gonna do is wait until fuel starts sputtering out here. So let me zoom in. Oh boy, that's a lot of fuel. <laughs> oh boy, that's gonna be flamey. All right, probably gonna burn my phone here. You get a lot of fuel. If it is ultra cold, this fuel will be very hard to light with my striker here. Usually I just use a striker that works at any altitude, any location, Antarctica, Denali, or whatever. And you've got that fuel sitting there. If you can't get it to light with a striker, you can always use a lighter. But if you have real trouble, you can put lighter paste on here or I put a little dollop of fuel on the top of this guy. And hopefully, since I'm doing this on video, see if we get to light. Of course, there's so much wind out here. Come on. Yeah, see, can't get it to light. 
Oh, there you go. Flame. Flame on now. You want to do this in a protected location. That's why it was difficult to do even at warm temperatures because that wind blows the flame out. Now what will happen is I turn off the fuel bottle when this first starts. Do not leave the fuel bottle on because you will end up with so much fuel that it will go totally crazy. And as you can see here, this guy's gonna flame around a lot. And you'll start hearing the hiss sound. Oh man, I got a lot of fuel in there. So this is a critical, critical thing. If you're in your tent and you see this massive flame, oh boy, that's gonna melt that. You see this massive flame, this is pure carbon monoxide generating. That yellow flame is poisonous. Do not be in a sealed environment. But once you start hearing the hiss, you can still see the yellow flame from the fuel holder. I open it just a little bit and you might get some bursts or jumps of flame. Never be over your stove because you will get burnt, baby. Wait for it to go completely, completely blue. You can still see some of the yellow fuel I dumped out of there. Just let that cook. Do not put your pot on until the flame is completely blue and roaring. MSR whisper lights are much, much quieter. Oh boy, I can feel the heat come off that bad boy. And there you go. So eventually the yellow flame will go out. You never put an empty pot on this thing. This stove will destroy your pot ultra, ultra fast. And there isn't much variability. This does not have fine tuned control. This is purely meant for. This is purely meant for melting water. You try and cook on this thing, you will burn your food, baby. And now the trick is when the pressure starts decreasing, you need to get in here very carefully. Give this guy maybe five pumps. Now you cannot see the flame in this video. This is a critical thing. You cannot see the flame, you will get burned. You can see the night. Be there. Right now, what we're going to do is listen to the helicopter go over. And we're going to shut this off. Normally people crank this crazy open. I don't do that unless I'm up high. And you can see it seeing the metal glow even outside. That's how hot this thing is. Alright, good. So what I'm going to do is just shut it off. Alright, we're going to shut this off. And we're gonna let it go. Make sure your pot is not on there when this process occurs because the yellow flames will blacken the heck out of your pot and then you're gonna get soot all over the place. Now as the stove begins to turn off, it'll convert to carbon monoxide again because there's gonna be a yellow flame. Now, this is the key. You can see it burbling and popping there. Yeah, that's when you're gonna blacken the bottom of your pot. Do not do that. Make sure you've dried your pot completely over the real flame. So the shutdown process now, make sure the fuel bottle is totally off. And normally you would actually put this guy around here. Sorry, I totally forgot that. I'm sure my subscribers are going to yell at me for not putting the flame diffuser or the wind stopper but if I put the wind stopper up obviously you can see what's going on with the stove you use the wind stopper because otherwise the breeze will uh, cut the mess up your heat and throw it away and you know not throw it away but blow it away so by the way yeah make sure you put this around your stove that way you get the most efficient cooking from there yes got myself here plus it also protects your fuel bottle from flaming going crazy you'll notice too i'm in an aluminum pan you can use the msr trillium it is super super nice but it's not as lightweight as you might think plus the heat from the stove and the infrared begins melting the stove the snow and this thing starts to waggle it's better than putting this in the snow do not put your stove directly on the snow because 
trust me, your stove will begin melting immediately. At least get the MSR Trillium. But really, just go to the grocery store, store get literally one of those aluminum pans, and that'll do just fine. Now, as you can see, the flame is still flaming, doing its thing. And what I do is I make sure the flame goes completely out. And I'll take this away. And you just let the flame go completely out. And you want the stove to cool off completely. You do not want to take off the fuel bottle with an open flame because this hose, the fuel hose, has a lot of fuel in there. When you take this off and you shut the stove off, and you pick this stove up, once you take this bottle off with this armature, a whole bunch of fuel will pour out of this hose. You need to be very conscious of that fuel so it does not pour on your snow that you're using for water or any other place where fuel contamination could endanger your health, either by consuming fuel or by accidentally lighting it on fire. Now, as you can see, this thing is still flaming. It does not give up. It does pretty well. You can see the little flame in there. Let me see if I can show you. Yeah, here it goes. Still flaming. It does not give up. So the reason I'm doing this in real time is to show you what the experience is like of how much time it takes and everything like that. Now, too, the reason you use a white gas stove instead of canister is that at altitude canister stoves, they don't work. They, they just don't work well with altitude. This can adapt to any altitude, including Everest and K2 and all those things. So that is a consideration. Now, even though the stove is out, that metal is hundreds and hundreds of degrees. It doesn't look like it, but you can easily burn your hands or your gloves. You want to wait quite a while. And if it's minus 20 degrees Fahrenheit or minus 28 Celsius, it won't take too long for that steel to cool down. But you want to make sure everything is completely cool. And then when everything's completely cool, you just simply very gently turn this, release this latch here, flip it, and maybe push the pump. And then just twist this guy a little bit. Come on. There you go. And watch for that fuel, because it will come out of this fixture right here. It will pour all over the place. It will pour on your hands, your clothes. It will get everywhere. But once you're done, I'm not going to do it, because it's still roaring hot. I want to end this video. But you want to grab the stove touch the flame diffuser, flip it upside down, and begin shaking it. And you'll hear this clicking. Let me see if it's is it hot enough to handle. Okay, good enough. Don't do what I'm doing. But you can hear this clicking. And what that is, is inside this stove, inside that jet, you cannot see it there, but there's a little nozzle in there. And there is a needle that sits up there and it waggles and it knocks the carbon out. This is a critical, critical maintenance step of the stove. Every time you shut this stove off, and I mean every freaking time, shake this for literally a minute when it really matters. Get this thing, shake it, and you'll start seeing all that carbon junk there that's what causes your stove not to work properly or burn improperly and give you carbon monoxide very very bad so just shake it and when you think you've shaken enough shake it some more because at higher altitude and cold weather that carbon buildup where you had the yellow flame will cause your stove to completely malfunction now obviously this is not the uh, maintenance portion of the video because that's a whole other story. I want to cut the video here, but just to show you that even though initially my ghost, these stoves seem intimidating, but the power of being able to refuel a bottle, keep going, go to any altitude, any weather, any conditions, any temperature and have it work. Ooh. Plus you want to make sure to get the mini repair kit 
for your stove or if you're going on a long trip, they're, the mini ones are smaller. If you're going on a long trip, make sure to get the full expedition kit that has all the repair parts in there. And if you're going out for a long time, more than a week, or you know, if you can't get water at all, I always bring my second fuel pump because if you break your fuel pump or something happens to this fuel pump, your stove is toast. So even though you might have the repair kit, if you break the pump arm or something on here, you won't be able to pump up that stove. So even though these things are a little expensive, believe me, when you have no way to get water and you're dehydrating, a second fuel pump, these guys right here, are totally worth your life. One other thing to be conscious of when you're taking the pump off is it's going to be coated in fuel. Do not frostbite your hands, but when you open this, it will spray fuel all over the place. There's no way to avoid that. So you just open this, and you'll see fuel kind of go all over the place, just the nature of the business. Just open this bad boy up very, very carefully. Take it out. Tap the filter stone off, and then See that fuel here? Blow on it. Make sure to put the lid on this thing too. It's so easy to dump the fuel ball over. Been there, done that. Oh my gosh. And by the way, I did have a friend, Climber, who did break his pump and he could not make water. Boy, that was terrible. So blow off everything. It'll make you lightheaded but it will save you later. And also your bottle will be covered in fuel. Blow it and they'll cause the fuel to evaporate so you have a completely clean surface. Hopefully this video has been helpful to you. Please put questions in the comments below. It uh, does take me a while to get to these because I've got a, a lot of stuff I'm trying to get doing and doing some other writing, but Put the comments below and I'll work my way through the videos and I'll do my best to put the link to the video that answers your question. And yeah, hopefully that's helpful. Check out links below in the description of my book, Adventure Expedition 1, where I talk about this and my other books. Antarctic Tears, Lost at Winnie Corner, Adventure Expedition 1, How to Keep Your Feet Warm in the Cold, The Jackson Hole Hiking Guide, The 50 Jackson Hole Photography Hotspots, The Most Crucial Knots to Know, and my 2024 Total Eclipse Guides, as well as my show, Antarctic, T or, uh, Antarctic Tears. Yeah. Thank you for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe to the channel so you can get more info like this. Thank you.